Hey and welcome back to part 2 of this hot tea tutorial series, <laughs> that's a terrible name but I guess it's the one we're going with. Uh, in the first part we rendered out the image sequence and now we're going to do the same for the smoke and the mask. So in the same file what I want to do is select a few things which we'll be deleting but and then I want to save the file as a new file. So what we're doing is press A to select everything and then I want to deselect the camera and the lights. I also want to deselect the cup, the empty and also the liquid. So press G. I also want to make sure I've got the plane selected. So what we're going to do is go to File and down to Save As. I'm going to save this as a new file. The reason why I'm doing it this way is so we can preserve the first file, uh, folder that we made, so we don't have to. So if we want to go back and make changes, we can do. Um, but I want to copy pretty much everything, so let's just delete these now. So we have just the cup, the empty, the liquid, and the camera, and the lights. So shift A, I'm just going to add a plane. And this is just to see, well, help to see the smoke a little bit better. Um, this isn't going to be needed, so if you don't want to do this part, you don't have to. It's just so we can see it in the viewport a little bit better. Okay, so I want to uh, get rid of all these textures. So the texture on the liquid, texture on the cup. In fact, we can delete that one, we don't need it. And let's put a texture on this one. And again, this is just going to be a dark color, so we can probably see the smoke a little bit better. Tab into edit mode, I can delete this handle since we don't need it. This cup is going to be used for when we do the masking, so um, we don't need to have a texture on it either. Also, you want to make sure you change some of these settings in the light pass later on, I'll come back and change them. But we want to make sure transparent is checked under film, because we're, we're going to be rendering this as a transparent PNG image sequence. <laughs> some mouthful. Anyway, so since we've got things set up, I think we can go ahead and add in our smoke. So we're going to use that circle that we used before as a liquid. We're going to use that for the smoke. We're going to have some problems when we're trying to cache things in since we've set the frame at, uh, start frame at 90. So I'll show you what I mean. If we select the circle and then go over to the uh, physics panel, then we want to give a, a smoke and then t change that to flow. Then we want to shift A and add in a cube. This is going to be the domain. So obviously every smoke needs a domain cube. So let's just scale this up. And you don't have to be too um, conservative with this cube because we're going to be using the adaptive domain so it will help us <laughs> speed things along so don't worry about it being too big. Just want to make sure you control A, control A and we apply the scale. Okay, so with the domain selected, let's choose smoke, and we make sure that's domain, and now we can see everything. And again, we sh when we press Alt A, we should see things, and we don't because we need to go back to frame zero before uh, for everything to start caching in. Unless you want to, uh, if you want, you can go to down to down to uh, smoke cache and change that to you know 90. But what I'm going to do is just change the start frame back to zero, go jump back to the first frame, and then press Alt A. So now we can see this sort of nuclear explosion smoke effect, which, I mean, if that's what you're going for, then job done, but <laughs> I don't want that. So what we will be using a wind element to affect that later on. First thing I want to do is change a few of these settings. So with the smoke selected, if we press Alt A, so we can see, we can see it's far too dense for this example. So go to density and I'm going to reduce this down. So if this was already 1, let's think we could put this to 0 0.16 or 1600 and this should reduce it quite a lot. So we'll jump to the first frame, press Alt A. So we can see it's very, very fine now, which is what we want for this example. Also when we increase the subdivisions as well, that'll help. I want to reduce this surface value because it's emitting too far from the surface. We don't want to play around with the temp, uh, the temperature difference because that will speed up or slow down the, the rising of the smoke. Let's just change this to a white colour. And again, jump to the first frame and then press Alt A. 
Okay, so if we, just with the domain selected, if we bump up these divisions, we'll get a better smoke. Before we do that, we want to make sure we've got the smoke, adapti uh, smoke adaptive domain selected. And again, when we jump to the first frame and Alt A this time, we can see it's added a new cube and it's speeding things up because it's sort of, uh, yeah, it's optimizing the, the space of everything, I guess. It's basically, it's a good thing, so <laughs> make sure you got that active. Then let's increase it to 64, the divisions now, so we can see that the smoke's a lot more finer, a lot more, um, there's more resolution in the smoke. So that's good. Now we want to affect the smoke itself, so what we can do is add in a wind element, so Shift A, let's go down to uh, force fields, and we want to add a turbulence. So I'm just going to place this about here, and if we play, uh, jump to the first frame, press Alt A, see how it's affecting it. It doesn't look like it's affecting it that much, uh, that's because we need to increase the strength. So around here, let me just pause this. Okay, so for this, I think a strength of around 20 maybe. Let's try 20. And also we want to give this a little bit of noise. And then jump to the first frame, Alt A. And we can see it looks a lot better. It looks, it looks more like smoke, uh, more like steam rather, which is good. I just want to scale this down as well, this smoke is a little bit too big, so I'll just scale this down. I also want to make sure the um, origin is to the geometry, so now I can scale it down. And jump to the first frame, press Alt A, it's a little bit better. So let's select this uh, turbulence and we're just going to drag it all the way up here, see how that looks. Yep, it pulls it up a little bit more as well, so you just want to play around with these and you can add more than one wind element, you can add as many as you want, um, just to get the effect that you're looking for. I think maybe a little bit higher and also a little bit stronger. No, that's way too much. <laughs> 23 should be good. And also you might want to um, keyframe these values, especially the noise, so you get a different look throughout the animation. So I can jump to the first frame, scale this down a little bit more. And then Alt A. So it's looking better, it's looking more like what I imagined it would. I want to select the cup and give this a collision under the physics tab. So now the smoke will stay inside the cup until it goes out. So we'll just have a look around, just show you what I mean. See the smoke, uh, the steam stays in the cup for longer. So when it starts coming out, it stays that shape. Again, you don't have to do that part, um, and I think it looks a lot better when it does look like it reacts with the cup. Okay, so again, go around and change all the settings that you want. Make sure you're happy with how it looks, because when we bake it, we won't be able to change these. If you press uh, render now, we'll just see a, a white cube. That's because the cube needs, um, yeah, it needs a new shader, it needs a new texture, um, a new material. So instead of creating a whole new material, I'm just going to shift A and add in a cube. And this is a lazy way of doing it. Um, add a cube, then hit spacebar and type quick. And we want to select quick smoke. And Blender is amazing because it does it all for us, sets up everything. So now that's done, we can actually just delete these now. So select these and then delete them since Blender's already added the material for us. Select your domain cube. And then what we can do is select this button here and then down to find the material, which is, is called Smoke Domain Material. And there you go, so, um, set the material up for you. So let's just uh, Alt A again. Let's pick one of these frames to render. So we'll give this a render. And now you see that it's very dark and it's like a black cube. That's because of the light paths. If you've already reduced it down or if you've if you downloaded this, the startup file, this is how it's going to look for you. So we need to go, we'll come back and change those in a minute. I first want to uh, bake these. So under, let's just check. So make sure these settings are what you want it to be. Jump to the first frame. I'm going to press Alt A to cache in these to make sure I'm happy with everything. I'll just speed this part up as well because caching it in can, it may take a few minutes. Okay, so say you're happy with that, we just want to go down to bake. And again, that'll take another couple of minutes to bake. 
But once that's done, you can play through the animation without it slowing down. And again, if you want, you won't be able to make any changes unless you free the bake, free all bakes, and then, and then rebake it. So that's, you're not committed entirely. Okay, so I want to delete this plane. It's not doing anything for us. <laughs> it was a mistake to put it in in the first place. Uh, we've make sure transparency checked. We can t turn off motion blur. Um, these are the light paths now, so I've increased this to four. The volume. I've also increased the transparency. I'm not sure I need that, but I just increased that anyway. And the render samples. You can actually get away with something quite small with, for this, because we're going to be blurring the smoke anyway. And we want to uh, select the cup and move it onto a different um, a different layer. Select the smoke element, and what we're going to do is check these two icons here. This one for the render, and this one for the visibility because we don't actually need to render that circle anyway. Now if we render, um, we'll get a very light looking wispy smoke. <laughs> so I'll speed this part up as well because it may take a few minutes. Okay, so this is what we've got and it might be hard to see right now, but when we add it over to the, um, the image, I'll just show you, go to the node editor and I'm gonna use, just switch it to the scene tab. I'm gonna shift A, I'm going to add in a mix, so straight away we can see the smoke shows up uh, a lot stronger. The camera just died on me there, so I apologise about that. So all I've done is just added a blur node and that mix node. And what we're going to do is just uh, take this feed and plug it into the top. Yeah, so that's all I've done. Maybe blurred it a little bit. And you can add some more effects in if you want to. I'm just going to shift A, add in a colour and then mix and this is just to see how it's going to look on our render when we composite things together. You can composite it in together now, just add a shift uh, Shift A, add in an um, image sequence node, plug it in here, shift A, I'm going to use a distort node, scale, this is just in case your render is not the same size, and then you want to check, click the checker box there. So we can see that the smoke fits on quite nicely apart from the overlap. So we need to mask out the this cut part here, which is very easy to do. So you can uh, create a mask for it now and then composite it all together. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete these. I'm going to render out this um, image sequence, this PNG image sequence. Then I'm going to render out the mask image, P uh, image sequence and then combine them together. So you can do it how you want. Uh, we're going to make sure PNG is selected and make sure it's RGBA. Make sure it's not RGB, otherwise it's not going to render the alpha transparency. Make sure the frame rate's the same. And again, you can have a quite a low samples for this smoke since it's um, it's not going to be that detailed. You want to make sure you save your file output and put this into a, a new folder, which because you're going to create an image sequence. So I'm going to render this out now. I want to change this back to frame 90. Start frame as frame 90. And I'm going to go ahead and render this out as an image sequence and then come back and render out the mask. So you can do the same if you want. Okay, so back into 3D, uh, 3D view. What I want to do is select this cup and move this over to the second layer here because this is going to be acting as our mask. So if we jump to the, th uh, press three to go to side view and I want to tab into edit mode vertices select and basically we want to keep these front faces here these front faces we want to keep so we'll let's select all these back ones here i'm going to go around it and make sure we've not selected anything extra like these we just want to delete half of the cup so press z to go in the, go out of wireframe press x to delete the faces go into camera view so essentially this is going to be our mask and as it moves, so will the mask, which is what we want. So we can add a new texture. I want to make that uh, a new material. I want to make this black. And then go to render layer tab. And what I'm going to do is just set up a new render layer since we've got two objects we want rendering. So this first render layer, which is going to be the smoke, um, if you've already rendered it out, then you don't need to worry. So select that first layer there. Just make sure this isn't rendered either. Okay. 
So the cup will be rendered on the second layer. So I'll make sure you shift and then click this one here. So they're both selected. And then let's create a new layer for it. So select this plus button and we can rename this if you want. This is going to be the mask. So you might be thinking, why don't I just use the mask tool in the layers? Um, it does, I don't think it works for smoke. If it does, you'll have to let me know in the comments. I think it's just for solid faces. But if we set it up like this, we just render out the mask. I mean, you don't even have to set up the, the render layers. Once you've rendered out the smoke, you just delete the smoke and then just render out the mask. So it's entirely up to you how you want to do it. But as long as you've rendered both of them out as a PNG as an image sequence, then we can combine them together in the step in the third part. So all I've done was um, take the the render layers, just duplicate it, and then change it to the mask layer, and then just inverted this. So yeah, you want to render out the, 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 the smoke layer first, and then render out the mask, and then we'll go into part three and then combine them all together.